is another global extinction on the horizon. Nature is being destroyed by human activities at a never-before-seen rate. The results are now being felt by us in the form of a potential sixth mass extinction. Heat waves, hurricanes and flooding are all growing more dangerous. Droughts, pest infestations and wildfires are all getting worse. Rising sea levels put coastal populations and ecosystems in jeopardy. And that's only the beginning. North America is poised to experience its worst calamity. Are we experiencing the sixth great extinction? Do we have a chance to avert the catastrophe or are we doomed? Join us as we explore North America's worst disaster of all time that is about to happen. Animals and plants exterminate themselves on a regular basis. It's a fact of existence. All the species that have ever lived on Earth, roughly 98% of them, have now gone extinct. When a species disappears, new species or other existing species usually step in to fill its ecological niche. It's commonly believed that between 0.1 and 1 species per 10,000 species per 100 years is Earth's normal extinction rate. The background rate of extinction is what is meant by this. A mass extinction event occurs when a species disappears far more quickly than it is replaced. This is typically understood as the loss of around 75% of all species over a short period of geological time, or fewer than 2.8 million years. It's challenging to pinpoint the beginning and finish of a catastrophic extinction. To determine if we are currently experiencing a sixth one, it is frequently based on the five major episodes that we are aware of when extinction rates were significantly greater than the background rate. In the Ordovician Silurian mass extinction, which happened 443 million years ago, 85% of all species perished. Sea levels substantially dropped as a result of temperatures sharply dropping and massive glaciers growing, according to scientists. A period of fast warming followed this. Numerous tiny sea animals perished. Three quarters of the world's species perished during the Devonian mass extinction event, which occurred 374 million years ago. The majority of these species were marine invertebrates that lived at the bottom of the ocean. Environmental changes throughout this time included global warming and cooling, a rise and fall in sea levels, and a decrease in the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The precise cause of the extinction catastrophe is unknown. The largest and most catastrophic of the five events occurred 250 million years ago and is known as the Permian mass extinction. More than 95% of all species, including the majority of the vertebrates that had started to evolve by this point, were wiped off during this event, also known as the Great Dying. Some scientists believe that Earth was struck by a sizable asteroid which released dust particles into the atmosphere, obstructing the sun and causing acid rain. Others believe that a significant volcanic eruption caused the waters to become poisonous and produced more carbon dioxide. At the time of the Triassic mass extinction event, which occurred 200 million years ago, 80% of the Earth's species perished, including several different kinds of dinosaurs. Massive geological activity that raised carbon dioxide levels, raised global temperatures and induced ocean acidification are likely to blame for this. 78% of all species perished during the Cretaceous mass extinction event, which happened 66 million years ago and included the last of the non-avian dinosaurs. The Earth was most likely struck by an asteroid in what is now Mexico, and ongoing flood volcanism in what is now India may have contributed to this. Are we experiencing the sixth mass extinction? Our Earth is undergoing significant changes, including catastrophic weather events like flooding, droughts and wildfires. With 18 catastrophic disasters wreaking devastation across the nation as planet heating emissions continue to rise, the US had a particularly trying year as communities battled the mounting effects of the climate crisis. According to recent US government data, weather-related damages to the US totaled $165 billion last year, $10 billion more than in 2021, 
and the third most expensive year since big loss records began in 1980. In terms of the number of catastrophic events, 2022 just slightly lagged behind 2020 and 2021, with 18 disasters resulting in at least $1 billion of damages. The yearly report indicated that 474 people lost their lives last year as a result of these significant disasters. The US has been experiencing a trend for years with a lot of disasters. Over 5,000 people have died and over $1 trillion in damages have been generated as a result of 122 different billion-dollar weather and climate catastrophes that have occurred since 2016. The US is experiencing longer, more intense wildfire seasons, catastrophic rainfall events, and the kind of enormous Category 4 and 5 storms that NOAA has never before recorded in its historical record, which dates back to 1851, among other trends of climate-enhanced disasters. While floods and wildfires have always occurred in the US, scientists have discovered time and time again that global warming is amplifying these events by causing more intense bursts of rainfall from a warming, moisture-laden atmosphere and by drying out tinderbox-like vegetation in places like California. Although the number of wildfires and acres burned were greater than the 10-year norm, analysts think the season could have been worse, despite the gloomy season forecast for 2022. Unexpected rainy weather reduced the severity of the fire seasons in Alaska and New Mexico. Resource accessibility in California was important, but so were the constantly favorable weather conditions. However, overall, fire seasons are becoming worse due to climate change. Forests are dried up by extreme drought and warming temperatures, which continue to be the main causes of an increase in fire weather. The US Drought Monitor reports that extreme weather is more prevalent than it has been in at least 20 years, increasing the likelihood of huge destructive fires. There is evidence that the climate crisis is also increasing the power of storms that strike the eastern states, such as Hurricane Ian, which struck Florida in September and became the deadliest storm to strike the US since Hurricane Katrina. According to NOAA, Ian was also the third most expensive hurricane ever, with $112.9 billion in economic losses. The expenditures of all types of extreme weather such as heat, which was responsible for hundreds of fatalities in Phoenix, Arizona alone last year, are not included in the calculations. National and municipal governments have made some progress in recent decades in terms of predicting hazardous conditions, evacuating people, and constructing more resilient infrastructure to withstand such shocks. The NOAA report, however, paints a picture of a situation in which the response to escalating disasters brought on by the climate crisis is falling short. There were only 18 days on average between billion-dollar disasters in the past six years, compared to 82 days in the 1980s. This has hampered the nation's capacity and resources to recover and prepare. With the passing of the Inflation Reduction Act, which will push at least $370 billion to ramp up renewable energy projects, and encourage people to ditch gasoline-powered cars and polluting appliances at home, there was a glimmer of hope last summer that the US was beginning to confront the causes of the climate crisis. Yet the problem persists, with emissions that contribute to global warming in the US increasing by 1.3% from 2021 to now, according to recent data. The increase in emissions was mostly caused by an increase in the energy consumption of buildings and a rise in the consumption of jet fuel as air traffic continued to recover after the COVID-19 pandemic. If the world wants to prevent catastrophic climate impacts, emissions must be cut in half globally this decade and completely eliminated by 2050, according to scientists. The increase in 2022 was a little more positive, according to the Rhodium Group, the research firm that produced the new emissions estimates than the resurgence in carbon pollution in 2021, which was bigger and also outpaced overall economic growth. It appears that 2023 will be a year of significantly greater carbon cuts, which will only pick up speed as the incentives begin to work. 
Ecosystems throughout the world are being threatened by invasive species, many of which are introduced by humans. Introduced species often degrade the quality of biodiversity in the area and compete with native species for resources, often leading to extinction. These are only a few of the terrible alterations brought on by people. The web of life on Earth is intricately woven. Over millions of years, this delicate balance has been developed. Numerous additional species are impacted when one species becomes extinct, placing several ecosystems in danger of extinction. Extinction happens naturally over hundreds of thousands of years, allowing nature to gradually rebuild what has been lost. However, humans have accelerated this process at a risky rate. It is staggering that the present pace of extinction is between 100 and 1,000 times greater than the background rate of extinction prior to the emergence of humans. There is no doubt that we are experiencing the sixth mass extinction. Such devastation has never before been brought about by one race on Earth. Could a sixth mass extinction be avoided? Mass extinctions are a significant and intricate problem. They may develop slowly, taking millions of years. It appears that we are currently going through the sixth, which is unquestionably the product of human activity, particularly climate change. In 50 years, the floods and wildfires we currently hear about in the news will be common occurrences. They will put our structures, infrastructures, transatlantic connections, satellites and more to the test making what is arguably the largest multinational effort in history to limit human impacts is crucial for the future of our planet. Every one of us must actively participate in this, which necessitates a profound adjustment of our values, attitudes and behaviours. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.